Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's get making our asteroid. We've got three things to do. One is to create the displacement, two is to create the coloring, and three is to create um, some just little details with some bump. So just a reminder, I've got, uh, I'm in the shading tab. I've got viewport shading enabled. I'm using the cycles render engine and I have a principled shader applied to the object. I'm just going to drop the specular down to 0.1 for that for now. Now for the displacement, we need a displacement node. So press Shift A and search for displacement and plug that directly into the material output displacement slot. We then need to get a noise texture and plug the factor from that into the height of the displacement. We need to change the middle level to 0.65 on the displacement, the scale on the noise texture to 1.2 and the detail to 15 and the roughness to 0.41. Now on the noise texture, we're going to add a mapping node and texture coordinate node. You can either shift A and search for those or if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, press control T and change the texture coordinate output to object. Okay, so that is our displacement. You can obviously fiddle around and get lots of different results with that. So we're just gonna drop that down there a moment and bring our principled shader up. Now for some color, we are going to grab a color ramp, drop it in here, plug it into the base color. Grab a math node. Just shoving these around a bit to make them make sense for me. And we're gonna plug the math node into the factor of the color ramp and take the displacement into the first slot on the value and set the other one to 0 0.3. Let's move you over a bit. Next up, we're going to grab a Musgrave texture. Another color ramp and a mix RGB, which we're going to drop in here. Take the color into color one of the second um, color ramp, plug the Musgrave texture into that, and take the vector from the mapping node into the vector of the Musgrave texture. Okay, on the scale for the Musgrave texture, set that to one, Detail to 20, dimension to 0.25, and lucanarity or lucinarity to 1.6. And you can see we've already got nice shading going on across here, but we're going to do a couple of changes. We're going to change the interpolation mode of the color ramp to B spline, and we are going to flip the color ramp. So we now have the lighter areas in the dips and the darker areas in the on the peaks. If you prefer to go the other way around, that's entirely up to you. Now for this bottom color ramp, we're going to add a third color. And we're going to drag the white in from the right to about there. Or maybe there. And we're going to again change that blending mode or interpolation mode to B-spline. For the factor, we are going to grab a layer weight, 
node and take the Fresnel into the factor. Change the subsurface method to Christensen Burley. Not sure it makes a huge difference, but I like to do it every now and again just to prove I can. Uh, now, let's move these up a bit. We are going to grab a bump node and plug that into the principal shader. We're going to take the color from this top color ramp into the height. And just so you can see what's happening, I'm going to zoom in a bit. So you can see it's quite a pitted texture going on. But we are also going to search for a math node and chuck it in between the color ramp and the bump node and set that to power. And then the... Uh, Oh no, hang on. Set that to maximum. And set this value at the bottom to 0.4. So we've actually got sort of various different ridges going on within the detail of the um, asteroid. If these nodes kind of get all the way, press shift and right click and drag through them and then g to move them and then you can kind of get a better idea of where they're going uh, now on the layer weight let me just zoom back in so you can see what difference it makes change the blend to 0.1 so it's not a huge difference but for my eye it makes a difference Okay, I think we're just about there. Okay, now, one thing that I did change when I was creating this texture, I'm not sure it makes a huge, huge difference, but I changed the type on the mapping node to vector. Didn't really see much of a difference, but hey ho, might be worth checking. Now then, let's just again see what the difference makes with flipping those colour ramps. So on this it kind of almost looks like it's got snowy peaks and um, darkened troughs. Oops, I took away the extra colour. So let's flip that back and if you increase the um, black shader from the right, or the white shader from the left, you get different results for the overall effect. And that's about it from me for this one. So I'm going to send that to render and I'm using a thousand samples. You might get away with less, depends on what you're trying to achieve, but let's take a look. Okay, and there we have our rocky asteroid. You can obviously change various different parameters and see what results you get, but I'm quite impressed with that. So if you found this useful, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching.